Tonight, the storms turn deadly in the northeast at this hour. Some are still being warned. Hurricane force wind gusts are coming. Also breaking tonight, the video just released by Hamas of the hostages. And in New York City, the well-known actor convicted tonight. First hundreds of thousands without power, flood and high wind alerts from North Carolina all the way up to New York City to Maine. Tonight, those hurricane force wind gusts still coming, already bringing down trees and power lines across several states. The confirmed tornado tonight, 90 mile per hour winds. Thousands of flights canceled and delayed. Boston's Logan Airport issuing a ground stop for hours. And now the big change coming tomorrow morning. Rob Marciano is here. Tonight, the awful images just in. Hamas releasing video showing three hostages, three seniors pleading for their release. And tonight, the outrage over three hostages accidentally killed by the Israeli military. They were waving a white flag to show they were not the enemy. Brick Planet in Israel. The stunning moment President Biden's motorcade is struck by a driver. You can hear the crash. The president then rushed into an SUV. And what we've learned about the driver tonight, Mary Bruce with new reporting. Tonight, Republican candidates for president forced to address Donald Trump's use of language similar to Hitler. The words Trump now repeatedly uses and why they're being condemned as extremely dangerous. Rachel Scott reporting. In New York City, the well-known actor Jonathan Majors found guilty of assaulting his ex-girlfriend. He had been a rising star. What he was accused of doing. The YouTube mom with millions of views, famous for giving parenting advice, tonight pleading guilty to charges of child abuse. Pope Francis revealing a major change in Vatican policy, allowing priests now to bless same-sex couples. There is news tonight about singer Celine Dion, what her sister has now revealed. The vase purchased at Goodwill for $3.99. What was it really worth? And our Made in America Christmas tonight on the hunt for your one thing, Made in America under the tree this year. Your new <laughs> ideas pouring in tonight. And we went to find them. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to start another week with all of you at home. One week until Christmas now, and of course, the storm for many who are already traveling. It's not over yet, hammering the East Coast all day, and it has turned deadly. Flood and high wind alerts from North Carolina to New York City to Maine, and at this hour, there are still hurricane force wind gusts in parts of the Northeast. The wind and rain whipping up the surf as high tide approaches now. Neantic, Connecticut, uh, more than 700,000 customers without power across several states in the Northeast at this hour. Heavy rain all the way up the I-95 corridor, at least four deaths tonight related to this storm. The rushing waters washing out roads. This is Oxford County, Maine you're looking at. Power lines uh, sparking and catching fire. These images from Brookline, Massachusetts, of course, outside Boston. A ground stop for a time at Boston's Logan Airport. Thousands of flights canceled and delayed in several states. And in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina tonight, look at the images there. A confirmed EF1 tornado, 90 mile an hour winds. And right behind all this, an Arctic blast, bitter cold with thousands without power. This is the lake effect snow in Michigan tonight, causing this multi-car pileup, I-94 near Kalamazoo. Temperatures in the teens and 20s across the Northeast by morning. Senior meteorologist Rob Marciano leading us off with the images and the forecast tonight. Tonight, powerful storms pummeling the Northeast, knocking out power for hundreds of thousands, massive trees flattening cars around Boston and punching holes into homes. The power outages across the state now approaching 300,000. I will tell you, there are trees down, there are power lines down. If you don't have to drive, I would just stay home. Connecticut getting slammed. Winds clocked over 60 miles an hour this morning. For the second Monday in a row, the Northeast getting hit with a storm. This one by far worse. Boston Logan Airport issuing a ground stop for hours due to the high winds as delays and cancellations piled up. Roads across the storm zone, no match for up to a half a foot of torrential rain. Drivers stranded in Newark before the sun came up. It's flooded over there, it's flooded over here. Like there's nowhere to go right now at this point. North of New York City, police in Leeds, New York, recovering the body of one person washed away in their car. And authorities in Maine say a man in Wyndham clearing debris was killed by a falling tree. The storms slamming the Carolinas with up to 16 inches of rain. He's floating. Uh oh. Cars uh -oh. floating downstream yeah. in Charleston. 
home surveillance cameras catching the moment a confirmed EF1 tornado blew through Myrtle Beach. This shopping center taking a direct hit from 90 mile per hour winds. And in Wake County, North Carolina, authorities say two people were killed on Interstate 87 Sunday after they stopped to help another motorist who hydroplaned off the road. The backside of the system even ramping up lake effect snow in Michigan, multiple pileups and several people hurt along I-94 near Kalamazoo late today. Incredible pictures coming in tonight. Let's get right to Rob back with us tonight. Not over yet, of course, as you pointed out, Rob, the bitter cold behind all this as well. So uh, take us through it. Yeah, it's still a very dynamic, explosive storm in December, David. You're right, it's not over yet. The low itself, I'll show you on the radar, is pushing most of the moisture now up through northern New England. Maine, you're in that low-level jet. That's where the hurricane force winds could happen through midnight. And you saw the, what the cold air is doing behind it. We got winter storm warnings up. Lee of the Great Lakes for lake effect snow. That cold core is going all the way down into the deep south. Birmingham and Nashville will be in the teens for, for wind chills in the morning. And we're watching two storms coming into the west. Storm number one comes in tonight. That's a weak one. Storm number two, that's stronger. That kind of on Wednesday and then slides to the south. This is going to be a longer duration event, so hopefully no flooding. But look at some of these numbers here. The computer models are pumping out one to four inches of rain, maybe five. That could cause some flooding. Certainly not ideal travel weather heading into Christmas weekend. David? That is for sure. All right, Rob Marciano leading us off here on a Monday night. Rob, thank you. We're going to turn now to the harrowing images just in tonight. Hamas now releasing images showing three hostages, three seniors pleading for their release as we learn new details of the three hostages accidentally killed by the Israeli military. They were waving a white flag to show they were not the enemy. U.S. Defense Secretary Austin in Israel urging them to move from high-intensity tactics to a fight that will save lives. ABC's Britt Clement in Israel again tonight. Tonight, three elderly Israeli hostages pleading for their release in this new Hamas video. The families of 85-year-old Imram Cooper, 79-year-old Kaim Perry and 80-year-old Yoram Metzger asking that we only use a still from the video. It's taking too long and every minute that passing, it, it's, a, it's a huge gambling on my grandpa's life and others' lives. The IDF calling it a criminal terror video, vowing to bring the more than 100 hostages, including Americans, back home. The IDF now saying its rules of engagement weren't followed when Israeli soldiers mistakenly killed three hostages in Gaza. A preliminary report finding Yotam Haim, Alan Shamriz and Summer Al-Talalka were shirtless, waving a white flag, when a soldier shot and killed two of them. Someone was heard crying help in Hebrew. Troops then ordered to stop firing, but the third hostage was shot and killed shortly after. Israel finding these signs near a nearby building where those hostages were believed to have been hiding. One reading SOS, apparently made out of leftover food. Families fearing their relatives held in Gaza could be next. This is a possibility that Israeli soldiers might accidentally kill hostages. Now what we feared finally happened and we feel we're very worried that this is going to happen again. In Gaza, chaos inside the children's ward of a hospital. Moments after an Israeli artillery strike. Rescuers finding the body of 12-year-old Dunya, who was recently orphaned and lost her leg in another strike. Just weeks ago, while recovering, Dunya saying, I only want one thing, for the war to end. And with the Gaza death toll soaring above 19,000, Israel facing growing pressure to shift strategy. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin continuing to urge Israel to move quickly from high-intensity operations to more surgical, targeted strikes on Hamas in Gaza. So let's bring in Britt Klenich. She's live in Israel tonight. Britt, I wanted to turn to the growing threat also to ships in the Red Sea. We've been reporting on this here. Iran-backed Houthi rebels attacking yet another vessel overnight. I understand now the U.S. and other nations are joining forces to try to counter this ongoing threat. That's right, David. The Defense Secretary tonight uh, announcing a new maritime task force to make sure that critical route is safe. Uh, the attacks already causing major economic disruption, sending oil prices surging and prompting some shipping companies to pause operations. David. Britt Clenet, live in Tel Aviv. Britt, thank you. Back here in the U.S. tonight into the security scare involving President Biden, a driver slamming into an SUV that was part of the president's motorcade. You could hear the sound of the crash, the Secret Service then rushing the president into his car, the first lady already in the car. And tonight here, what we've learned about the driver. Here's Mary Bruce. Tonight, authorities investigating this frightening moment. 
President Biden leaving his campaign headquarters in Wilmington, stopping to answer a reporter's question. Mr. President, why are you losing to Trump in the polls? And then suddenly, the sound of a crash. The president stopping in his tracks. The Secret Service then rushing him into his SUV, the first lady already inside. Reporters on the scene scrambling to see what happened. This car had slammed into a vehicle that was part of the president's motorcade. The driver surrounded. Authorities tonight calling it an accident, saying the driver was drunk. That driver has now been charged with driving under the influence and inattentive driving. And tonight we're told the president and first lady are doing fine. David. All right, Mary Bruce at the White House. Mary, thank you. We turn now to the race for the White House and former President Trump campaigning in New Hampshire again using language uh, echoing Hitler. Tonight, his Republican rivals have been forced to address this, the words being condemned as very dangerous given how they were used in recent history. Here's Rachel Scott. Tonight, the Republican candidates for president forced to address Donald Trump's use of language similar to what Adolf Hitler once wrote. Trump declaring immigrants are poisoning the blood of America. They're poisoning the blood of our country. That's what they've done. They poison mental institutions and prisons all over the world, not just in South America, not just the three or four countries that we think about, but all over the world they're coming into our country from Africa, from Asia, all over the world. They're pouring into our country. Only one of Trump's leading Republican rivals denouncing him, New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. What he's doing is dog whistling to Americans who feel absolutely under stress and strain from the economy and from the conflicts around the world. And he's dog whistling it to blame it on people from areas that don't look like us. In Iowa today, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis refusing to criticize Trump for using language reminiscent of Hitler, instead calling it a tactical mistake. So here's the thing, uh, this border is such a disaster to give them an ability, the opposition an ability to try to make it about something else with, with some of those comments, I just think it, it's just a tactical mistake. Why are we in a situation where we're even having those discussions? South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley often speaks of her experience as a daughter of immigrants. My parents came to an America that was strong and proud and full of opportunities. She didn't mention Trump's comments that immigrants are poisoning the blood of the nation. Her campaign instead releasing this statement, saying we need to shut down the border. We don't need chaotic rhetoric that fails to get the job done. DeSantis calls this a tactical mistake, but clearly Trump does not think so. He has used that phrase repeatedly on the campaign trail. He is now leading his Republican rivals by 50 points. The Biden campaign releasing a statement saying Trump is channeling his role models by parroting Hitler and is threatening democracy. David. Rachel Scott on the campaign trail tonight. Rachel, thank you. Here in New York City tonight, actor Jonathan Majors has been found guilty of assaulting his ex-girlfriend. He was a rising star, now convicted tonight. Here's our senior investigative correspondent, Aaron Katursky. You're an interesting man. Tonight, actor Jonathan Majors, once a rising star in the Marvel Universe, convicted of domestic violence. A jury in New York finding him guilty of assaulting his then-girlfriend, Grace Jabari. The two were in an SUV back in March when a message from another woman popped up on his phone saying, I wish I was kissing you. Jabari grabbed the phone and said when Majors tried to grab it back, he left her with a fractured finger and a cut behind her ear. Critical to the case, this video showing Majors shoving Jabari back into the car before he takes off with his phone. She chases him, but he pushes her away and runs. Majors later calling 911 after finding Jabari passed out on the floor of their apartment. What happened exactly? Do you know? No, I don't know. Um, uh, but she's unconscious. The jury found Majors did not intentionally assault Jabari, acquitting him of two counts, but determined he acted recklessly, convicting him of two other misdemeanors. Majors now faces up to a year in prison when he's sentenced in February. He's unlikely to serve that, but tonight, David, he has learned of a career consequence of the conviction. Our parent company, Disney, says Marvel will no longer be going forward with Jonathan Majors. David. Aaron Katursky here in New York tonight. Aaron, thank you. Tonight, a major change from the Vatican. Pope Francis formally allowing Catholic priests to bless same-sex couples. The new declaration saying God's love and mercy should not be subject to, quote, an exhaustive moral analysis. There are conditions, though. These blessings are not to be confused with the sacrament of marriage or performed at the same time as a civil ceremony. 
When we come back on a Monday night, the YouTube mom, famous for giving parenting advice, millions of views, now pleading guilty to charges of child abuse tonight. Also, there's news on gas prices for the holiday and news on Celine Dion tonight. But her sister is now revealing. Tonight, the mother giving parenting advice viewed by millions on YouTube, now pleading guilty to charges of child abuse in Washington County, Utah. Prosecutors accusing Ruby Frankie and business partner Jody Hildebrandt of abusing and starving two of Frankie's six children. Authorities say the children were bound and malnourished at Hildebrandt's home. As part of her deal, Frankie will now testify against Hildebrandt. To travel this holiday in tonight, Southwest Airlines has been hit with a record $140 million fine from last year's scheduling meltdown, you'll remember, over the holidays. Nearly 17,000 flights were canceled, stranding more than 2 million passengers. The Department of Transportation says the airline did not provide adequate customer service, notifications, or prompt refunds. Southwest must now provide $75 flight credits to future passengers whose flights are delayed more than three hours when the airline is at fault. When we come back here tonight, news this evening about Celine Dion and the vase bought at Goodwill for $3.99, what that vase was really worth. To the index tonight, Celine Dion's sister is sharing more about her sister's battle with stiff person syndrome. Her sister giving an interview in Canada saying Celine no longer has control over her muscles. The condition, an incurable neurological disorder, forced her to cancel her world tour last year. But her sister also saying Celine remains hopeful and still plans on one day returning to the stage. And we're rooting for her. Tonight, the hidden treasure in plain sight. Jessica Vincent bought a vase for $3.99 at a Goodwill store outside Richmond, Virginia. Later finding out it's a rare piece of Murano glass designed for Vanini by Italian architect Carlo Scarpa in the 1940s. It sold at auction for more than $107,000. Not bad for a $3.99 vase. When we come back, our Made in America Christmas, your ideas pouring in over the weekend. The new list tonight in time for Christmas. Finally tonight, we love it, our great Made in America Christmas. Tonight, something for everyone, including the family dog. Tonight, our great Made in America Christmas is back. Our 12th year, the famous windows on Fifth Avenue on the hunt with so many of you. Do you think people check the labels as much as they used to? Maybe my age. <laughs> you still do. I do. <laughs> Christmas tonight, just one week away, but there's still time. Hey, David. Well, hi, David. In Waynesboro, Virginia, northwest of Richmond, the company Blanc Creatives. Hey, David. Owner, Corey Blanc. Our flagship product is our carbon steel cookware you see on the wall behind me here. And more. Wooden utensils and cutting boards, cutlery, and even garden tools. The wood from Virginia trees. The metals from Virginia, Pennsylvania, Colorado, Texas. Ten workers in all. Hey, David. Christopher Knox, head of cookware productions. All of our products come with a lifetime guarantee, and they're meant to become the next generation of your family heirlooms. Made in America! And tonight in Pompano Beach, Florida, north of Fort Lauderdale, the company Popalicious. Hi, David. Owner, Maria Bailey. It's popcorn freshly popped and grown in Missouri, Indiana, and Ohio. We top it with Pennsylvania chocolate. 25 workers making 4,000 pops a day, two tons of popcorn during the holiday season. And we wanted to meet the farmers behind the corn. Hi, David. Meet Gavin Spore from Spore Farms in Martinsburg, Missouri, 600 acres of corn. Behind me here, you can see a field that was popcorn this previous summer. It's fun to watch a little seed turn into a large plant, which we then can harvest and clean and package and ship directly to people's doorsteps. Still in time for Christmas. In Austin, Texas tonight, they're reminding us, don't forget the other member of the family. Hi, David. Michael London and his company, Bow Wow Labs. Our mission is very simple, and that is to keep dogs safe, healthy, and happy. Their invention, the Bow Wow Buddy. John Devro, Chief Nutritionist Officer. We invented the Bow Wow Buddy, a safety device that securely holds bully sticks and other chews. The Made in the USA Bow Wow Buddy allows your pup the ability to engage in their favorite activity, but safely. Here's how it works. Simply take the chew and insert it inside the hole and screw down. And that's it. The 12 week old labs tested them out. <laughs> In Omaha, Nebraska. Hi, David. Melissa Stevens and her shop, The Cordial Cherry. Come on in. 15 workers hand dipping, hand decorating cherries, 500 boxes a day during the holiday season. Made and finally, to Dallas, Texas, perhaps one of the last places you'd expect to see a snowman. Hi, David. 
Kate Weiser, owner of Kate Weiser Chocolate. This is our signature holiday product, Carl, the drinking chocolate snowman. Uh, he's basically a giant cocoa bomb that you put in a big pot of milk, gather your friends and family around the stove, watch him melt into delicious hot cocoa. 71 workers, 80,000 snowmen this year. I'm here with our shipping manager, Sade, and we send out about 2,000 packages a day during the holiday season, all going to different locations all over the United States, and it all happens right here. Made in America! And tomorrow night right here, some last-minute ideas as we celebrate our small businesses. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Thank you for making World News Tonight with David Muir, America's most-watched newscast.